Hi, I'm John Muser, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Kai Botanic. We are the plant cell company. And today, I'm going to invite you to think differently about plants. All around us are plant products, but you may not realize the most valuable aren't in the produce section. There's hundreds of products that are high value because they're so difficult to grow. And they make up a $250 billion industry for ingredients in cosmetics, health, household, household products, fragrances, and flavors. For example, raspberry ketone. It's the essence of raspberry. It's used as a flavor and as an ingredient, but it's present in the raspberry at such tiny quantities that it's worth $20,000 per kilogram. Or aloe. You probably don't realize that the aloe powder used in cheap consumer products is actually very expensive. Processed aloe powder costs manufacturers $400 a kilogram. Or the $60 billion market for natural rubber used in car tires and aircraft tires, but it's destroying our rainforest. So at Kai Botanic, we asked a simple question. If all we're after is just a tiny part of the plant, why are we still growing the whole plant? What if we could grow just the cells that matter? We can. We can grow high-value products from plant cell cultures the same way bacteria, fungi, and animal cells have been used. But importantly, we can grow high-value products with plant cell cultures that can't be made by these systems. And the key is that plant cell cultures can grow 30 times faster than the same plants in the field. We start the process with the plant. We convert it into stem cells. And once we discover the right combination of growth factors and environmental conditions, they start to become a plant cell culture. But plant cell cultures still need to be improved before they can be scaled commercially to make the final product, which in this case is a non-toxic aloe powder. But we don't do those improvements manually. We use high-throughput robotics to continuously select for just those few cells that grow fast and that make the products we want. Our go-to-market product is aloe. Now, it's the ideal market because it's massive. It's a $1.6 billion market, but it has a problem. Aloe produces a potent toxin. Normally, it has to be processed out but our aloe vera cells can be grown without the toxin. So it doesn't need to be processed, and that ultimately it's worth twice the value. This is an aloe farm. It grows slowly. Aloe plants double maybe once a year, but plant cell cultures double on the order of days, not years. So we can replace a whole farm with just a 50 liter volume of reactor. And the aloe market is growing at 10% per year. We'll first intersect the cosmetics and medical market. Then as we, as we scale up and our costs go down, we'll come into the nutrition, personal care, and eventually the low cost drink markets. And we're concurrently growing multiple different products with each with a clear path to market from our fruit stem cells, which are the hottest things in cosmetics, to a more sustainable form of natural rubber, to, aloe oil, or to orange oil, which is used as both a fragrance and industrial solvent, or the highly prized fragrance of vetiver, which is an oil that's used in the, only the finest colognes. But we started with each of these because we've already identified interest from a customer or an industry partner. So what's important is that we already have revenues. It's because we have a hybrid business model. 
So we either sell our platform as a service, or we sell the products that we make. We already have four cooperative development partners, and they're willing to pay us $1.5 million over the next two years, which includes the development of our robotic pipeline. And this revenues that we'll be able to leverage into becoming a product company with many product lines. We already have three LOIs for our Allo. We're also working with the product development team of a cosmetics company to help us develop our very stem cells. Our entire stack is protected from the cell lines we create to the way we made them, to the way we optimize robotics for plant stem cells, and finally, the genetics of the cell lines we create. Our management team is composed of myself and Robert Jinkerson, CSO and co-founder. We met working together as lab mates in graduate school. Afterwards, I went into industry to learn high-throughput biotechnology techniques. Robert went to the Carnegie Institute of Plant Bio at Stanford, where he adapted yeast robotics to make a 200,000 mutant library in algae. So now we're combining my high-throughput bio background and Robert's robotics and applying it to plants in a new way. We have an esteemed advisory board, including Ben Mole, who's an expert in plant biotechnology, John Feiner, whose specialization is plant cell cultures and breeding, and Mark Falouz, who's one of the world experts in scale-up of plant cell cultures. And finally, Marquita Landry, who's a UC Berkeley professor who's developed a plant agnostic way for plant transformation. This year, we're going to be developing our robotics pipeline, and we're going to be scaling up our cultures to the 300 liter scale so that we can provide to our customers sample products and convert those LOIs we have now into JDAs. Our next step is we're raising a $3.75 million seed round. And with that, I'd like to invite you to join us to change how we grow. Thank you.